A note about PSI rating versus megapascal versus schedule numbers on pipes. This is not about pipes, but it will be about pipes because we're going to start here. If you came looking for this video and you found it, you're going to hear this first. <clears throat> Pipe schedule pressure estimates are supposed to be based on the designed pressure divided by the max allowable material stress based on the material it's made out of in megapascals and then divided by only 1,000. So let's say it's 40, schedule 40, then that would indicate 40,000 megapascals. What the fuck is a megapascal? Okay, a megapascal, one megapascal is 145 psi. So let's say we had a schedule 10 pipe just because I want to do this easier on my head. That means it's 10,000 psi, 10,000 megapascals. Now, if we just add one zero, that works out to a large number of psi. All right. Well, no, that works out to 145 psi or 145,000 psi or something like that. Right. Right. That's what it is. Right. You want to do the math? You want to, it has nothing fucking whatsoever to do with the psi rating. Let's just get her done. The outside diameter of pipe in a nominal diameter is the same for all the pipes, no matter what the schedule number. They lie on every single website when you talk about pipe or tubing. Tubing can have a different diameter, internal versus external. But the thing they standardize is the outside of it because that's where they put the threads on it so you can thread it. It's the threading standard, and it's oversized by a small amount. The one-inch pipe diameter on the outside is actually a little over, and it's called <coughs> not one-inch pipe. Three-quarter-inch pipe is actually one-inch external diameter. So take a quarter-inch add to it? No. The term schedule is used to describe the thickness of the pipe wall in relation to the final inner diameter. It has nothing to do with even the outer diameter. Regardless of PSI, but a megapascal is still 145 PSI. That's nice. Can you use this to estimate the PSI rating of the pipe? No. It has to be destructively tested, and then you divide it by a certain number to get the working pressure, based on the material being able to show a reliability level of 10 years at pressure. So that means uh, you have to look up everything. <clears throat> the inner and outer diameter you have to look up, although the outer diameter is actually stable. It's the only thing. That's for pipe. It's based on steam pipe. The PSI rating for burst versus working versus rupture versus... Uh, critical fit there's a hundred different engineering numbers for it but it all depends on what metal mixture was done did they heat treat it was it cold rolled or was it heat made was it cast is it really steel or is it nickel steel or is it uh, chromium steel or high carbon steel these all affect it so you have to look up every damn detail about it you cannot say schedule 40 pipe is rated for a certain pressure level period full stop because there's schedule 40 plastic tubing and it is exactly the same thickness as the steel pipe it's obviously not the same psi rating so let's not discuss that same thing with copper brass uh, aluminum they're just the physical diameters that's it and uh, <clears throat> let's get to it now i'm going to discuss the inner and outer diameters of pipes as pertains to a specific thing this is the purpose of the video. Here we go. Here <coughs> <coughs> my god. So there we go. Schedule 40, one inch declared pipe. STD is 40. I mean standard, the standard pipe, default pipe, is schedule 40. It is rated to 12,000 PSI. Ignore everything else. It has a 1.31 inch outer diameter and a 1.049 inch inner diameter, <coughs> which is just slightly smaller than the next size down called 3 quarter inch, which has an outer diameter of 1.05 inches almost exactly. So you grind or sand one of them to the dimensions you need. Hint, sand or reduce or enlarge whichever one you care the least about worrying about for pressure differential. Again, this is steam pipe format. <coughs> or thread the larger pipe on the inside and the smaller pipe on the outside and then make them fit to each other, which is what this is actually for, apparently. Yeah, that's, that's where they came up with. It provides jam fit failure range and, and slop range to where they jam fit. 
that's what it was based on. It's pipe fitter. This is pipe feeder schedule numbers. That's it. You could use the next size up as a uh, redu reducer or expander and do the work. Good night. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> and by the way, schedule 40 again, three quarter inch pipe is rated to 12,900 PSI, 1300 PSI. Because it has a thicker casing to it, apparently. Or maybe it doesn't need to have thicker casing because it's smaller diameter. But it'll just barely not fit into the other. And all you have to do is, whichever pipe is going to take the most stress, don't alter it. Alter the one that takes the least stress. <coughs> Schedule 40 1-inch pipe can be used as the receiver for a 12-gauge shotgun based on the 3 quarter inch pipe being put into it. Demonetized. Next. Um, if it's Schedule 40, it makes a good chamber for a 12-gauge, and it has the least amount of work because it's 0.824 internal diameter. It's supposed to be 0.81, but it's pretty close. If you want something closer, a 1-inch pipe, which is not 1-inch diameter, will have the same thickness as both of these pipes combined, and it has a 0 0.815 five inch inner diameter. It's just so close to being the same thing as a damn bull barrel for a 12 gauge. This is what I'd recommend because also it does not have any change in the diameter throughout it. There is no choke effect. There is no forcing cone. And if you put a 12 gauge shotgun shell in it, in many designs people have shown, the shell sits there even if you just tap the primer. Warning, that's for bird shot. Don't overdrive it. I'm going to have a video on this. But this would be a schedule 160 one inch pipe for 22,000 PSI combined pressure level it is damn near literally a 12 gauge shotgun barrel don't modify it I'm gonna repeat that do not compromise the barrel by doing a damn thing to it if it has threads leave them on anything you do to it will heat it up and compromise it and you have to be told how to test this the reason for this is you can get a short length of it, although they recommend a 30-inch barrel to test anything, to test this sort of thing and make an extremely well-reinforced frame to put it into by using the next pipe up threaded or a cap on it and then putting it in a bucket of dirt to test it. <clears throat> and this is the highest safety of all of these stupid shotguns you're probably thinking of doing when you looked up this video, if you found it. Now, there's another one in this uh, range. <coughs> it's 1,700 PSI rating, and it's called Extra Strong, and it's Schedule 80. And this is the three-quarter inch pipe again, but its inner diameter won't let you put a shell into it, but it's 0.742 inner diameter. That's almost exactly the same as your average shotgun internal bore. It's literally, the, it's very close to it. In fact, you could then mill it by drilling it out with a drill bit that's the right diameter. Now the d diameter for that is you use a 0.8125 drill bit. That's the closest thing you're going to find. And it's a 13 16 drill bit. It's a 20.64 millimeter. It has to be three inches long for the shell to fit in. You want it three and a half. And then you want to have it have a point on it so it'll cause an automatic forcing cone. And you can use this. This takes the most work and it also creates a pressure spike, but it has a thicker casing on it and would provide literally, nearly, if you did the drilling correctly, a nearly perfect diameter match for the shell. Because the other one, the other one that's very close and almost perfect, and it's a bull barrel, is 81 and a half caliber. This one is 81 and a quarter caliber, which means it's only off by a quarter of a caliber. So it's a better barrel by just drilling it. Now, why am I bringing this up? <coughs> If you want to do these experiments, you use a blank cartridge. If you want to do this stuff, you use a light load or, or a mini shell. If you want to make a flare gun, you can buy these hunks of tubing that are this freaking long and make a flare gun. It isn't illegal as long as you do not modify it. That's it. And that would mean that you'd have to use the uh, Schedule 40. And uh, it's a good chamber if it's a flare gun. But if you're going to fire anything heavy, you're going to use that one inch pipe the Schedule 160, double extra strong. And you have to make sure you have a clear space of three and a half inches, make it four. So you use a four inch drill bit, make sure it has a cone on it, and then you can use a cone shaped bit, like a unibit. Now why would I bring this up on the channel here and post it here? The reason for it is, 
if you want to do these experiments, these are nearly the only diameters that have the least amount of work, highest likelihood of working, and the least amount of work you have to do to compromise it. And you can do the experiments safely by not being anywhere near any of these things where you pull a trigger. And I mean that last part very importantly. All of these are required that you use some sort of triggering mechanism. The reason for that is very simple, because you cannot hold these when you fire them, because you need them to be dead centered. They have to aim this way. You can't aim them up in the air. It's illegal as hell to do that. I mean, it's truly illegal to do that. If you're caught doing that, you, that's prison because you're endangering anybody who might be flying over or anybody downrange miles away. It has to hit a backstop, even if it's a blank. I'm not kidding. Yeah, because there's a plug in the end of the blank and the, the plug can hit someone and blow their head open. I'm not kidding. It's a bad idea. But if you're going to aim at downrange, you have to make sure the barrel doesn't go up or down or right or left it, because it's just a metal tube. It doesn't have a kick that goes one direction. You have to bolt the damn thing down. If you're going to do that, it has to be symmetrically bolted to where it doesn't move anything because you need to observe the thing at a distance and see if anything goes wrong and instantly recognize it. That means you're just going to put the pipe in a vise or a tube holder or a frame and the frame has to symmetrically expend the energy. That means you're going to bolt it down to a table. That means you're going to bolt it flat to the table. The table's going to be just short of the length of it. That means you're going to use a 2x4 to lift this thing up and put it at the edge of the table and have a firing pin driven by a spring behind it that you move out of the way of it and then when you move the spring-loaded thing over here, that's when it can fire. I'll have a video on how to set that up. Now, why would I tell anybody how to do these things on a YouTube channel? They're going to flag my channel for some bullshit reason. YouTube and Google have confirmed that. This is going to get re-uploaded automatically to BitChute. So let's go on. <coughs> what about 410? Half-inch schedule 160 pipe. 26,000 PSI. It's uh, got a 0.464 inch inner diameter. You have to drill it to be a 410 chamber. Chamber's obviously not 410, it's larger than that. And you can also grind the outside of it <coughs> and make it a subcaliber adapter or barrel for a 12 gauge. It'll fit. It's nearly the same size. This requires the least amount of work. It's still more work, but it's the least amount of work and you get a really good barrel because its inner diameter is pretty close and you only have to drill it a little. Next, Schedule 10. Yeah, they make this. Schedule 10 quarter inch pipe is actually an outer diameter of almost over half an inch. The inner diameter is literally 0 0.410. It's literally the internal diameter is the gauge of a 410 shell. That requires more drilling. But you get literally this close to having a 410 shotgun barrel off the shelf. Don't alter anything else except the chamber. And you can put another tube around it to reinforce it if you feel the need to. Please do that. Next, Schedule 40 3 8 inch pipe is 16,000 16, PSI. Excuse me. Its outer diameter won't work for a subcaliber adapter unless you shim it. It's 0.65 inches. But its internal diameter is 0.493, and that's a loose chambering for 410. And we'll show you why you don't want to use it. Because the loose chambering, instead of a drilled or matched chambering, especially drilled, um, makes a very bad thing. As the shell fires, it expands. So it has a running start to go from here to here to hit the side. That running start effect causes it to be able to create a slapping effect to the metal of the tubing and cause it to fail catastrophically. PSI ratings for 410 shotgun shell are comparable to 12 gauge. Period, full stop, they're almost the same thing. I was frightened to find that out. It's like, really? They're rated the same? Yeah. The PSI rating out of a 410 is almost the same thing as a 12 gauge. <clears throat> Test barrel, 30 inches. Using recommended standard generic barrel types, 15,000 PSI for both. And they use, to test them, a 25,000 PSI proof charge. So you got the information below you to which one to use. I'd recommend using bull barrels. Um, now you know why you buy a gun for 50 bucks that's got a barrel that's already designed this way. And if you want to make a pistol based on this kind of crap, have fun. I'm not going to do that probably ever. I might do it, but I'm going to be 80 feet away and behind a lot of blo blocks of wood and stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.